Hey all, Michelle Raza here with Finding Yourself SATX Life Coaching, where since 2017 we've helped our clients achieve success by first setting their personal vision statements, then working towards their goals, and most importantly, meeting often enough with their coach to be held accountable to those goals. Please do check out my website. It's at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. Thanks. Thanks. Today we're going to talk about Melody Beatty's Codependent No More. <clears throat> we spent the last few weeks talking about uh, defining codependency as well as going into some stories about codependence. So basically trying to help you understand what it means when somebody is codependent. Um, today we're going to move on to the concept of detachment, which I would say is a very difficult concept, um, very easy concept very difficult in practice it's something like mindfulness meditation those things that you can very quickly grasp kind of the meaning of it but to actually practice it is quite difficult um, and she does preface so this is the first it's chapter five in the book and she does state that the entire rest of the book is built on the concepts of detachment so while we're going to talk about detachment in chapter five Everything that she's telling us about how to cope with being a codependent is focused on the principles of detachment. Um, so this is an excellent work. I highly recommend that you pick up your own copy. And without further ado, we will dive in. <clears throat> detachment. It, detachment, is not detaching from the person whom we care about, but the agony of involvement. This is a quote from an Al-Anon member. And then she proceeds to define what attachment is. Not detachment, but attachment. Attachment can take several forms. We may become excessively worried about and preoccupied with a problem or person. Thus, our mental energy is attached. Or we may graduate to becoming obsessed with and controlling of the people and problems in our environment. Our mental, physical, and emotional energy is directed at the object of our obsession. We may become reactionaries instead of acting authentically of our own volition. Thus, our mental, emotional, and physical energy is attached. We may become emotionally dependent on the people around us. Now we're really attached. We may become caretakers, rescuers, enablers to the people around us, firmly attaching ourselves to their need for us. So basically a codependent is attached. They, um, if we go back to the definition of the codependent, they live their life in such a way that somebody else's problems are more important than their own problems. So on page 34, a codependent person is one who has let another person's behavior affect him or her and who is obsessed with controlling that person's behavior. I think the most important piece of this is that you, you, do not take care of yourself in the way that you should because you are so obsessed with the other person. And that's the part of the attachment that is dangerous. Okay, and then here on page 60, a better way. Exactly what is detachment? What am I asking of you? The term, as you may have guessed, is more jargon. First, let's discuss what detachment isn't. Detachment is not a cold, hostile withdrawal, a resigned, despairing acceptance of anything life and people throw our way, a robotical walk through life oblivious to and totally unaffected by people and problems, a Pollyanna-like ignorant bliss, a shirking of our true responsibilities to ourselves and others, a severing of our relationships. Nor is it a removal of our love and concern, although sometimes these ways of detaching might be the best we can do for the moment. Ideally, detachment is releasing or detaching from a person or problem in love. We mentally, emotionally, 
and sometimes physically disengage ourselves from healthy and frequently painful entanglements with another person's life and responsibilities and from problems we cannot solve. According to a handout titled Detachment that has been passed around Al-Anon groups for years. Detachment is based on the premise that each person is responsible for himself or herself, that we can't solve problems that aren't ours to solve, and that worrying doesn't help. We adopt a policy of keeping our hands off other people's problems and tend to our own instead. If people have created some disasters for themselves, we allow them to face their proverbial music. We allow people to be who they are. We give them the freedom to be responsible and to grow, and we give ourselves that same freedom. We live our own lives to the best of our ability. We strive to ascertain what it is we can change and what we cannot change. Then we stop trying to change the things we can't. We do what we can to solve a problem, and then we stop fretting and stewing. If we cannot solve a problem and we have done what we could, we learn, learn to live with or in spite of the problem. And we try to live happily, focusing heroically on what is good in our lives today and feeling grateful for that. We learn the magical lesson that making the most of what we have turns it into more. So how do we detach? How do we extricate our emotions, mind, body, and spirit from the agony of entanglement as best we can, and probably a bit clumsily at first? An old AA and Al-Anon saying suggests a three-part formula called how, honesty, openness, and willingness to try. In the chapters ahead, I will discuss some specific concepts for detaching from certain forms of attachment. Many of the other concepts I will discuss later will lead to detachment. You will have to decide how these ideas apply to you and your particular situation, and then find your own path. With a little humility, surrender, and effort on your part, I believe you can do it. I believe detachment can become a habitual response in the same manner that obsessing, worrying, and controlling became habitual responses by practice. You may not do it perfectly, but no one has. However, and at whatever pace you practice detachment in your life, I, I believe it will be right for you. I hope you will be able to detach with love for the person or persons you are detaching from. I think it is better to do everything in an attitude of love. However, for a variety of reasons, we can't always do that. If you can't detach in love, it is my opinion that it is better to detach in anger rather than to stay attached. If we are detached, we are in a bit better position to work on or through our resentful emotions. If we are attached, we probably won't do anything other than stay upset. When should we detach? <clears throat> when we can't stop thinking, talking about, or worrying about someone or something. When our emotions are churning and boiling. When we feel like we have to do something about someone because we can't stand it another minute. When we're hanging on by a thread and it feels like that single thread is frayed. And when we believe we can no longer live with the problem we've been trying to live with, it's time to detach. You will learn to recognize when detachment is advisable. A good rule of thumb is you need to detach most when it seems the least likely or least possible thing to do. And then she goes into a story, a true story of something that happened to her that was quite funny. And it was a woman just totally obsessed with her ex and calling and how he had made all the wrong choices and um, it was actually a stranger that called her so it was even more awkward and we close out the chapter with some activities so I'd like just like we did with Dr. Gibson's book if you can get a journal you can of course pause the video and come back to it 
Um, but let's go through these activities. One, is there a problem or person in your life that you are excessively worried about? Write about that person or problem. Write as much as you need to write to get it out of your system. When you have written all you need to write about that person or problem, focus on yourself. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Two, how do you feel about detaching from that person or problem? What might happen if you detach? Will that probably happen anyway? How is staying attached, worrying, obsessing, trying to control? How has that helped so far? In the words of Dr. Brewer, he would say, what are you getting from this? Three, if you did not have that person or problem in your life, what would you be doing with your life that is different from what you are doing now? How would you be feeling and behaving? Spend a few minutes visualizing yourself living your life, feeling and behaving that way, in spite of of your unsolved problem. Visualize your hands. Visualize your hands placing, she says in God's hands, but I want to make this more open to everyone. Visualize your hands placing in God's hands the person or problem you are concerned about. The other thing you could visualize is putting the problem not necessarily the person because that would be too much, but putting the problem, um, there's exercises where you put them in a balloon and you watch them float away, or you put them in the, in the river and you watch them float away. The problem, not the person. <laughs> Visualize. So it's more of the same. Visualize his hands gently and lovingly holding that person or willingly accepting that problem. Now visualize his hands holding you. All is well for the moment. All is as it should be and as it needs to be. All will be well, better than you think. So I'll read this part again. I'll just read it and then I'll talk about the alternatives in case um, it doesn't really click with you. Visualize your hands placing in God's hands the person or problem you are concerned about. Visualize his hands gently and lovingly holding that person or willingly accepting that problem. Now visualize his hands holding you. All is well for the moment. All is as it should be and as it needs to be. All will be well, better than you think. So if we do the, um, the balloon one, it would be visualize placing the problem inside of a balloon holding it tight, and then letting go. Visualize the balloon floating away gently and being carried off to sit on a cloud that accepts the balloon and holds that balloon. Now visualize yourself laying down on a cloud and being held by the cloud as it holds and accepts you. All is well for the moment. All is as it should be and as it needs to be. All will be well, better than you think. And if we do it with the water, so visualize placing the problem you are concerned about gently in, in the river, in the water. Watch it float and then go into, you know in the water where they have those, it's like that little area that kind of holds it. Visualize it being cocooned in that little area of the water, being held and safe. Now visualize yourself in a pool of water where you float. Not a flowing river, but just a water where you float. And you're supported and you're held up by the water. Close your eyes and accept that you are being supported by this. All is well for the moment. All is as it should be and as it needs to be. 
all will be well, better than you think. So I wanted to be sensitive. Some of this, it, what she did was the God example. I just want to be sensitive to everyone's beliefs. And, you know, some people, that's a good metaphor for them. And for some people, it's not. So I just want to be sensitive. Um, I also want to be sensitive. The concept of detachment, it is very difficult when you love someone. And if the person that you're a codependent with is a, a dependent, like a chemically dependent person, whether it be alcohol or another substance, and they're like your romantic partner in your life, or somebody else that's a, a fellow adult in your life, I think the concept of detachment is quite difficult, um, but easier than if the person you're codependent with is someone that you're a caregiver for, whether they be a child, a troubled teenager, or um, an elderly parent who you're caring for. Because codependency can be any, any time that you're letting somebody else's problems basically drain you to the point where you're no longer healthy. And so the concept of detaching from somebody who's harming themselves with a chemical addiction is one thing. The concept of detaching from like a parent that you're dealing with that has Alzheimer's or a child that has a disease, um, that's much more difficult. So I don't want to make it seem like this is so easy, right? Visualize that you're lying in a river and everything's good. Like, no, it's not good. You still have the same problems. In the moment, it's kind of like the five finger, you know, the meditation exercise where you put your hands together. It's just to help calm you for the moment. But to actually make a difference in your life, you have to put a plan together. Um, and so if the, if the person that you're codependent with is a chemical dependent, it may be leaving the person. It may be uh, going to AA and Al-Anon together. NA and the corresponding anonymous group for the codependent together. Um, and if it's a, if you're a caregiver, you may need to find good respite care. So you're exhausted, right? You're caregiving for somebody that actually is dependent and you're not able to take care of yourself properly. So you need to find good respite care. Um, so I just, I don't want to make it seem like this book makes it it, it lays out the steps and it's just like the other books that we've covered. It makes it seem, oh, it's so easy and I should be able to solve my problem so quickly. And it's like, no, no. And I don't want to make you feel like, oh, we read a chapter on detachment, so I should be able to detach. Like, absolutely not. It's very challenging. Um, so anyway, if you like these videos, I ask that you do like and subscribe. It really does help us little YouTubers. Um, I did realize, so my daughter's spring break is a week earlier than lots of the other kids, so I'm going to go ahead and extend my spring break special on the digital products for another week. If you want to check out my site, it's at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. Thanks for hanging out with me, y'all. Uh, really love all of your comments. Please keep them coming. Um, I did, so my, my work, and I've been having a client uptick, um, so my time is just a little bit tight. So I'm going to be posting uh, once a week on Wednesdays. Uh, I wish I could do more, but I appreciate you being here with me today and watching this video. And next time what we'll cover is uh, chapter six. It's called Don't Be Blown About by Every Wind. So it's talking about reacting instead of responding, which I think we've covered somewhat um, in some of the other videos that we've talked about. All right, y'all have a great day. Have a great week. I'll see you a little bit later. Bye.